Ladies and gentlemen, we are back at it, giving you the truth and nothing but the truth, unlike the big media, where they don't give you the truth, where they only lie and continue promoting their agenda and propaganda. But here at the Miguel Lopez Show, that's not what we do. So if you are here for the first time, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share so we can continue putting out free content for you and all our viewers. The left is at it again. They trying to promote this race war again. It's funny how every election, close to the election, we go back to the same stupid arguments about race. Not policy, not what's gonna be best for the country, but race, race this and race that. Donald Trump was invited to the black Association of Journalists, National Black Association of Journalists, whatever it's called, I don't know. That in itself to me is racist. It should just be Association of Journalists. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, Hispanic, Asian, brown, whatever you are, it does not matter. If you're a journalist, you should be part of the Journalist Association. There should only be one Journalist Association. But anyway, to continue back on track, Donald Trump was invited to this association along with possibly Kamala Harris or President Biden. He didn't know who was going to be, but that was what he was promised. So he showed up there. They were late. Their equipment was malfunctioning. And one of the journalists from ABC, I'm not going to give her names because to me, she's not a journalist. She's more like an activist. But anyway, right away, she started attacking Donald Trump. Not even saying, hi, how are you? It was attack after attack. Like, as a journalist, you should be ashamed of such conduct. Mr. President, we so appreciate you giving us an hour of your time. I want to start by addressing the elephant in the room, sir. A lot of people did not think it was appropriate for you to be here today. You have pushed false claims about some of your rivals, from Nikki Haley to former President Barack Obama, saying that they were not born in the United States which is not true. You have told four congresswomen of color who were American citizens to go back to where they came from. You have used words like animal and rabbit to describe black district attorneys. You've attacked black journalists, calling them a loser, saying the questions that they ask are, quote, stupid and racist. You've had dinner with a white supremacist at your Mar-a-Lago resort. So my question, sir, now that you are asking black supporters to vote for you, why should black voters trust you after you have used language like that? Well, first of all, I don't think I've ever been asked a question so in, in such a horrible manner, a first question. <laughs> you don't even say, hello, how are you? Are you with ABC? Because I think they're a fake news network, a terrible network. <laughs> and I think it's disgraceful that I came here in good spirit, uh, I love the black population of this country. I've done so much for the black population of this country, uh, including uh, employment, including uh, opportunity zones with Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina, which is one of the greatest programs ever for black workers and black entrepreneurs. I've done so much. And, you know, and I say this, uh, historically, black colleges and universities were out of money. They were stone cold broke. And I saved them, and I gave them long-term financing, and nobody else was doing it. I think it's a very rude introduction. I don't know exactly why you would do something like that. And let me go a step further. I was invited here, and I was told my opponent, whether it was Biden or Kamala, uh, I was told my opponent was going to be here. It turned out my opponent isn't here. You invited me under false pretense. And then you said, you can't do it with Zoom. Well. Uh, you know, where's Zoom? She's going to do it with Zoom, and she's not coming. And then you were half an hour late, just so we understand. I have too much respect for you to be late. They couldn't get their equipment working, or something Mr. was President, wrong. I would love I think you it's can a very nasty question. Well, I, I have answered the question. I have years. been the best 
president for the black population since Abraham Lincoln. Better That's than, my answer. Better than President That's Johnson, who signed answer. the Voting Rights Act. And for you to start off a question and answer period, especially when you're 35 minutes late because you couldn't get your equipment to work in such a hostile manner, I think it's a, a disgrace. We know he doesn't discriminate whether you're black, Hispanic, Asian, white. If you're attacking, he's going to get back at you. He treat every journalist the same. So they were attacking Donald Trump, and he defended himself. I am going to play a couple of clips from that interview, and also a few clips from the media, like I said, CNN, MSNBC, ABC, and those news outlets that are so far left and keep on pushing this narrative and all this weird agenda and trying to divide the country with their racial war because as, if you got eyes and you do your own research you're gonna know that it's a racial war now they're trying to divide the country and trying to blame on trump because whenever we question something now we are seen as racist or devices or any weird term that you can think of is always given to not just us conservatives, but people with common sense that don't just believe the narrative, that they do their own research and question when things are not right. But let's watch some of the clips and then we continue after. So uh, I've known her a long time indirectly, not directly very much. And she was always of Indian heritage and she was only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black and now she wants to be known as black. So I don't know, is she Indian or is she black? She has always but identified you know as a black woman. I respect she went to a either black one. college. I respect either one, but she obviously doesn't because she was Indian all the way and then all of a sudden she made a turn and she went she became a black person. Just to be clear, sir, do and you I believe think, that she is I think she somebody should look into that too. Okay, so what we're gonna cook today okay. is an Indian recipe. Yes. Because yes. you are Indian. Yes, yes. Okay, and yes. I don't know that everybody knows that, but I find that wherever I go and I see Indian people, the uh -huh. supermarket, uh -huh. on the street, everyone's like, you know Kamala Harris is Indian, right? It's like <laughs> our thing we're so excited about to have you running for president. Yeah. So we're both Indian, yes. but actually we're both South Indian. Yes. Uh, why is former President Trump questioning the vice president's racial identity? Well, first, George, uh, in Chicago, he was responding to a question from, I believe, Rachel Scott. Like, this is really a phony controversy. I don't really care. Most people don't. But if we're going to be accurate, when Kamala Harris went into the United States Senate, it was AP that said she was the first Indian American United States Senator. It was actually played up a lot when she came into the Senate. We have had that conversation about her policy views, but how does her changing her views on her policy justify having the presumptive, the Republican nominee questioning her race? How does that, does that increase or decrease your party's chances of winning in November? Well, well, Caitlin, you haven't had that conversation with Kamala Harris because she's been hiding out. I want to have this conversation days, with you, Senator. Just like Joe Biden hid out before her. I'm, and my point is, when are you and the rest of the media going to demand that Kamala Harris come out and answer questions in an unscripted format about where she stands for this country, as opposed to continuing to focus on what Donald Trump said today? You know, four years ago, Joe Biden said, if you don't vote for him, you ain't black. Could you imagine a more insulting comment? Joe Biden is presuming to judge the political okay, views you, okay. of one eighth of our fellow citizens based on their skin cover, skin color. Did you did you ever ask Kamala Harris to condemn his remarks? There are did you ever ask him or ask her Senator, if that was racist? This is a question. You're a Republican did you ask, did Senator. You ask, did you so I want to ask, ask you about Caitlin, the Republican nominee. Did you ask Caitlin? Caitlin did you ask Kamala Harris? Caitlin, did you ask Kamala Harris why she's willing to serve as vice president for a man she essentially called racist and a segregationist? Have okay, you well, or anyone else in the media asked Kamala Harris those questions, Caitlin? Let me just ask it to you this way, though, Charlemagne. Does he deserve credit, as he says, for showing up at the Black Journalist event yesterday? Uh, peace, Aaron. How are you, first and foremost? Um, no, uh, does he deserve credit? No, he doesn't deserve credit. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't. I don't give a damn about any of this, and neither should you. Like nobody in the media should care. Donald Trump doesn't have any new tricks. He focuses on identity. He focuses on race. He focuses on gender. He makes white America think that the changing demographics of this country are a threat to their livelihood. Man, to be honest, 
Camilla has, she already said that she wasn't black. It's all over Kamala. everything. Kamala she didn't have an interview. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I understand. But uh, <laughs> uh, she already said that she's not black. She identifies as an Indian. She, but she was did. running she and she did that. all of that in California. She never, uh, yes, she, she has. No, she hasn't. Have yes, read, she has. Have you, a, listen, have you ever read she, her book? In, no, in, I don't read. I don't. I won't. I don't. I won't. Say what now? In, in her book, she specifically talks about how, you know, her mom uh, definitely instilled her Indian heritage in her, but also told her she was a, a, a black woman and raised her to be a proud black they woman. They have an interview. She has a verbal interview with a white woman, and she says that she is not black. She is Indian. Lord have mercy. I cannot stand Charlemagne the God. Like, he's such a race hustler. And what are you talking about, my guy? What are you talking about? Saying your comments a little bit ago, talk about policy. What policy has Kamala Harris? Trump has tried to talk about his policy. He has spoken about policy and what he's going to do. But Kamala Harris is yet to speak about this issue. She has not. And you are race hustling again when all her campaign is being based on that that she's a female she's a person of color that's all you see in the media that's all you see in the news so what are you talking about trying to make it like trump is the one saying all this thing this is what her campaign is being based on my guy so for you to have the audacity to go and try to do reverse psychology because people are questioning what you're doing and you race hustling and you're basing an entire campaign based on I'm a woman, I'm a woman of color. And then when we ask about it, now we're the racist. When that's what you're playing, you're playing the race war. And then when people question you, then you try to reverse psychology and put on them. But I can't like, that's why I don't listen to the breakfast club. The media will continue playing these clickbait comments to try to make you think that Donald Trump is racist. But you have to do due diligence. You have to do your own investigation. And I just believe the narrative or everything you hear on the news. Because as far as we know, the media is way too far left. And they just continue promoting propaganda and all these stupid agendas that has nothing to do with policies or what. It's going to be best for the country. And going back to the interview that Donald Trump held at the Black Association of Journalists, that was a perfect time to ask a significant question about policy, what he's going to do, not just for the black community, but for America in general. And they miss out on a great opportunity, even though Kamala Harris did not show up, did not even respect your time to go to this event. And instead of taking advantage and asking relevant questions, they just started criticizing him and personally attacking him. So it goes to tell you like, all this media outlet, they get the same agenda, the same memo, let's attack Trump, let's bring the race car, let's bring the race car, let's bring the race car. And that's what you have been hearing for the past five days and since Kamala became the nominee for the Democrat Party, she has not given an interview. And when she's on camera, she takes no questions. So why not do an interview, an unscripted interview, where you can ask questions to see what are her opinion and her topics and her policy, see where she's standing. And I bet you she won't be able to answer those questions because unless she's reading or with her media-friendly outlets, all you're going to hear is like, ha, 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 the stupid laugh, which is so freaking annoying. Make sure you investigate and don't just believe the narrative. Remember, Kamala Harris lied to you for almost four years, saying that President Biden was strong as a horse, a stallion, like super out there. And then we all saw it. We have been seeing it. So she didn't even invoke the 25th Amendment because she's not suited to be president. She lied to you, saying that he was excellent. And then you also what happened. Now she's the nominee without nobody voting for her. So as you can see, the Democratic Party continue doing these non-democratic things. Saying if you don't wake up, ask anybody from other countries like Cuba, some of these other countries, how you went from democracy to socialism to Marxism to communism. And that's what we're going to end up if you don't wake up. And don't go and vote just because it's a female 
or she's a person of color, vote for the policy and what she will do for you. How are your pockets gonna get better? How is the grocery gonna be down? How is the inflation going to be reduced? Are you going to be able to afford a house? Are your kids gonna be able to afford a house? If you cannot honestly answer those questions based on Kamala Harris policies, then you know what to do. Vote the right way. Don't just vote because she's a woman, a person of color, whatever she describes herself as as now. Vote for policy and what's going to be best for the country. I'm out. And remember, like, subscribe, share, and we shall continue in the next one.